Hey everybody, how's it going? It's just me, Graham, uh, and uh, this is normally when we would be doing a uh, checkpoint, but Graham and Kathleen are uh, still up in Mount Washington. And, uh, a bunch of the Loading Bay Ring crew went up there for the uh, for the weekend, uh, and so, but I'm here, and I thought that since I'm here by myself, uh, I could play, I would play a game uh, that uh, you may not have seen before. Uh, this is a game uh, called Creeper World 3. This is, as you may guess, the third iteration of the Creeper World franchise. Um, I believe I talked about this game long, long time ago uh, on like an episode of like those games you played. Um, I talked about the original one, the Creeper World just the regular one, which was a, originally a Flash game um, that I got really obsessed with. And it was like, you could get, there was like a Flash demo of it. And so you could play that and then you could buy the real game. And it was, it was a really nice, well done game. Um, and I bought the full version of it. Uh, and then there was Creeper World 2, uh, which was very cool because it was the same, a lot of the same mechanics as the first one, but they changed, he changed the perspective. So it was actually like a, uh, uh, instead of a top-down view, it was like a 2D sort of side scroller view. Anyway, uh, but now this is actually a new game that's come out quite recently. Uh, it's come out in the last couple months. Um, is Creeper World 3? It's bigger and better and really fun, and I really enjoy it. And uh, I've been playing it a lot lately at home, and so I was thinking that uh, I could play it here. This is a game that I can actually, you know, play and talk knowledgeably about. So maybe I can give you, uh, you know, a little tutorial on how to play, too. Uh, or at least how I play. I mean, I'm sure there's lots of different ways how to play. But uh, we can uh, we can do this. And uh, if you like the look of the game, I highly recommend you buying it. It's, it's produced by, like, it is an indie game in the very purest sense of the term. Uh, it's done by a, a company called Knuckle Cracker, which from what I can gather is basically just one guy, which is pretty incredible. Like the, the amount of polish on the game is really amazing. So anyway, I'm going to put on my headphones and I'm going to switch over to the other camera. And uh, we are going to play some Creeper World. Now this is my, oh here, well, we'll switch over. Alrighty, so this is Creeper World. Uh, this is Creeper World 3, Ark Eternal. The name uh, which will become relevant as the game progresses. Now, uh, this game is the, uh, so I just downloaded this onto this computer here. Um, it's for Mac and PC, by the way. Um, so if you, uh, so I obviously I don't have any progress in the game. So I'm gonna be starting from the beginning and uh, We will be doing it and uh, El Sheens, thank you very much for saying you like to come and hustle. It was uh, a lot of fun So anyway, here we go so You can see there's uh, lots of the one of the great things about this game is as well as the Ark Eternal which is the actual uh, storyline mission there is not only Colonial Space, which is user-created missions, uh, but there is also the Alpha Sector, which is like uh, temp missions that were in progress or, or that didn't work out and just kind of interesting stuff. But the guy has also developed basically a random level generator that uses fractal logic to create levels and has created, so there's pr the Prospector Zone and Tormented Space, which is basically just like huge assortment of crazy levels that have been randomly generated. And then there's the DMD, which is the dial map device, which allows you to tweak all the settings. So anyway, it's very cool. So we will start here and you'll get an idea of what the kind of game looks like. Uh, again, for, for this style of sort of indie game, uh, this has a surprisingly in-depth story. There's characters and 
you know, a plot progression, and it's very, uh, uh, there's, uh, you know, plot twists and betrayals and so forth. Anyway, here we go. It's so exciting. Quiper World 3, Ark Eternal. Uh, by the year 13271, in the first common era, humans had spread to the to a great galactic empire. They'd all but achieved they they all they achieved ended when the Creeper arrived. This is Creeper World One, by the way. Thousands of worlds were destroyed by an unknown enemy. Yet a small group of less than fifty thousand humans survived. Their impossible journey ended in the destruction of the enemy Nexus and the founding of a new sole human colony. Thirty years later, the enemy returned. Yet and yet humanity held back the darkness. A peace that would endure for millennia was created. But like all things crafted by human hands, it was not the last. That would be Creeper World 2. Again and again, the Creeper would return. Eons would pass between each culling. Empires would rise and fall, each more brilliant than the last. But no matter how great humanity became, it would always succumb. Through it all, one man slept. His journey on the first great exodus was not to be his last. Guarded and watched over for billions of years, his time to awaken has come. Now, when the last of the great human empires has slipped away into the night, the sleeper awakens. There isn't an option for like, don't awaken, so I guess I'll awaken. Whoop! Scars, wake up, scars! Commander, Star Squad, Axe There's no, there's no voices, so I'll do the voices if you don't mind. <laughs> Commander, Star Squad, Abraxas. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Who are you? I'll, I'll keep the ship's lights very low. You have slept for a very long time. My name is Leah. I don't know any Leah. The last thing I remember was is Plateus laughing and saying, Forever Faust Fabius. Where am I? Where is Plateus? And who are you? That all happened in Creeper World 1. Plateus. Slowly, Plateus created me shortly after he placed you in suspended animation. I was your guardian for the eons that passed. I have watched and protected you for many cycles. I am part of the ship we are on. We have been in orbit around a stable singularity for many eons, hiding from all that has transpired. Just how many eons? It's a bad sign when they say eons, because you know it's not going to be like one. It is difficult to measure because of the expansion of space, the rift, the rift space cataclysm, variations in various cosmological constants. Quit stalling, just a round figure. Over five billion Earth standard years. So this guy basically got uh, red dwarfed. Oh my god! Why? Answer me, why? I'm sorry, Scars. All I know is that now, as when I was told to awaken you, I and this ship are now at your disposal. My only instructions are to point from this point forward or to follow your commands. Now this makes sense or seems even possible. I long ago abandoned the concept of impossible, so let's take a look. The ship's sensors indicate that we are no longer orbiting a singularity. Correct. I warped the ship to a nearby star system to, to begin the reactivation process. Unfortunately, there appears to be a warp inhibitor in this system, so we're stuck here until we do something about it. Uh-oh. Always with the warp inhibitors. That's to stop you from just moving forward. Warp inhibitor? Move the ship to Tempest, the world without a shield, then launch ground activities. I'll explain more once we get there. Alrighty, so there's my little ship dude there. Wait, we can zoom in. Whoop. There we go. There's my little ship. Right there. And I'm going to move to Tempest. Boom. So you warp by destroying the warp inhibitor, as you might guess. So this is just this is just a level selection screen. It's just fancy. All right. Here we go. This should suffice for demonstrating the core capabilities of the ship. This is a, There's a creeper emitter here. Oh my god. Yes, I'm afraid so. Much has happened while you slept. Dozens of human civilizations rose and fell, each trying... Do we want to... <laughs> is everybody else getting lots of buffering? I hope not. I've been trying... We've been trying to make this... 
better at that, but. All right, I'm getting tired of reading this stuff out. I'm actually just gonna skip it because I know what to do. Okay, so the basic idea behind this game is it's 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 essentially like a stripped down. Uh, it's essentially like a, a stripped down, um, uh, like a RTS game. Okay, so excellent. I'm glad that you're not getting the buffering thing. Okay, so it's it's essentially like a stripped down RTS game. Um, where you don't have unit or like the enemy doesn't have units they have this creeper stuff so anyway you'll see so there's this creeper node right here right I'm just gonna pause here for a sec so there's this creeper node right here that just produces this blue stuff which is called creeper uh, it actually is a little bit like a tower defense game too but not with paths uh, and so so this is just a tutorial level. So it says land. So I've got my command node here that I can place wherever, uh, not wherever I want in this case, but normally wherever you want. Build collectors. So there's uh, one resource in it basically, uh, which are these collectors, which are is energy. And there's a couple different ways to get energy, but the main one is collectors. Um, and you can see I'm building collectors a little too fast here which means that my network here goes red, uh, which means that there's too much, uh, um, uh, that, that I'm, I'm drawing too much power, which means I'm building stuff too fast. So this is the equivalent of the like four farms in a barracks area. Build 10 collectors. All right, now build three pulse cannons. All right, so we got our collectors, but now we need something to power with our collectors. So let's build some pulse cannons. So you notice here, the pulse cannons are connected to my collector. So you have this like network going on uh, where each, so, so you see the, these are what are called build packets. They're the little gray ones. And then the, uh, and then the red ones that are coming out are energy packets or, or ammo packets. Uh, so, the ammo packets uh, fill up these guys with ammo, and the energy packets, or, or in the build packets, build them in the first place. So, if I disconnect this guy from the network and go, aha, go over here and fight, very, very slowly, I can build some collectors. And you can just kind of drag to make collectors to slide faster. This is an innovation in Creeper World 3. It is very good. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm building collectors. Building collectors. All right, so watch, watch what will happen here when this guy... Uh... When this guy starts shooting this creeper, you see his little uh, ammo... Ammo uh, thing there starts going down. And he's not getting refueled because he's not actually connected up to my network. So... But if I connect him to the network, then he can start getting uh, ammo packets being sent to him from the command ship here. So you have to kind of build this like this network uh, to support your dudes, which of course is uh, can be vulnerable. Uh, and so, you know, so if, if we had creeper like coming up down from the back here, it could be dangerous because, uh, you know, if, if one of, if like a node in my network gets destroyed and uh, then everything past that node will lose power, right? So it can be very, uh, uh, very tricky to main make sure you keep your thing, your nodes, your, your network all connected and good. So I'm just going to uh, quickly finish this up. So. I've got these uh, these blasters are working away at this uh, creeper here, so I'm gonna move them up and uh, slowly work my way along here. See, I can see the these are there's different levels of terrain, and down here you can see what level of terrain uh, your mouse is currently under. So you can see right down here is very low, and then it gets higher here. 
and then it gets higher and higher and higher. And the creeper is basically like water. It's like f sort of very viscous water. And so it has to, so it has to build up quite a lot before it will move up a level of terrain. And so you're usually, so you, you can uh, work your way along. And, and you notice, you see uh, when I click on my guy here, there's a red circle or red squares around him. Those, that shows his uh, attack radius, but the stuff that's red it indicates that he can't hit there because it's higher than he is. All right, so I'm gonna beat my way. So the trick here is that, so I can, I can destroy the creeper like this, and that's all well and good, but I can't actually destroy the creeper emitter, uh, which is that guy right there. I'm just gonna, gonna get rid of mist. I find it distracting. Okay, so the creeper emitter you can't destroy. For that, you need to mo get the nullifier. Is this thing here, and the nullifier? I like to call it the sub up, sub ultimate null nullifier. You know, the ultimate nullifier from like Marvel comics. Anyway, so basically, what the idea with this is, it's a building that you have to. It's it's a, a thing that you have to place near to the creeper. So you have to be, you have to have defended enough here, so that. Uh, so that the because this is very fragile, it can be easily destroyed. So if the if the creeper runs into it, it will destroy it. So we're gonna place it uh, out of range of the creeper, but still within range of there. And you can see woo, all these little build packets. Those gray build packets are coming along my network here. It's got uh, various you know the fairly sophisticated pathfinding algorithm going on. So if I one cool thing you can do. So like if I wanna, I can build. Uh, like this and uh, well this is actually not going to be built by the time this is done but anyway you can build if you build uh, a connection the AC now they're taking the faster way to get there all the all the packets Oop. they will anyway once this is done yep there they go see they're taking the faster way to get there the more direct route which is pretty sweet I think so this thing's charging up. All right, so the object the actual objective in this level is to collect this uh, key or uh, key pod here, um, which is uh, a so that will unlock the next level basically. I mean it's it's a fairly simplistic system. Um, now he hasn't told me about it. But because this is a tutorial level, but you see that blue outline. Uh, you see that blue outline circle here. This is awesome. So the, this is also a new thing in Creeper World Three, is that that's what's called a PowerPoint. And a PowerPoint, if you put a any of your things onto a PowerPoint, which is left after you destroy a creeper emitter, uh, it gets super powerful. So depending on, there's a lot of strategy, strategy around uh, what things, you know, you, you, there aren't that many creepers, so there aren't many PowerPoints in level. So let's say, so, but if for instance, I put this guy down on the PowerPoint, you can see his range massively increases. So it's like normal guy, PowerPoint guy, and watch this. Not only does his range increase, but boom. Oh yeah, he becomes a super turbo turret. In fact, he's firing so fast, you can see the the ammo packets that are coming to him can't actually get to him fast enough. Oh, also I block. Okay, see what I did there. So this is a this is something tricky. One of my guys was actually acting as a bridge, so he was connecting that, and then I moved him, uh, which disconnected that whole section of the network so you want a more solid thing there. Anyway, that was mostly just fun. Obviously that was a very easy level because it was the first level. Oh, I have achieved 
collected the key. Doo -doo. I will claim my victory. <laughs> you can see I did not do too well, but I don't really care about that. So the shield, so because I got the key, the shield around this other planet has been lowered. So I can go there. The little red circle thing above it um, indicates that uh, that is where the uh, warp uh, preventer thing is, in warp inhibitor. <laughs> All right, so here's a little bit more complicated level. Okay, so the planet Tempest can a shield key. The entire planet is shielded? That must be a desperate attempt to defend against the creeper. One that failed. Yeah, so basically a recurring theme in this game is every level you come into would be like, hey, something cool happened. Uh, or we, we there's a plan to defeat the creeper. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> there's a large structure here. That must be the warp inhibitor. That would be that. Which is also a creeper emitter. Suck. So that is a creeper emitter and that is a creeper emitter. So we got two in this level. Uh, but if we destroy the emitter, it'll destroy all the, uh, if we destroy the inhibitor, it'll destroy all the creeper emitters on the level. Uh, do -do -do. All right. So I'm gonna land my command node. And check this out. So this is a tech artifact here. So I'm gonna get a, it'll allow me to get a thing I couldn't get previously, which is a relay. So uh, now we have two ways of connecting our network together. So we've got, we've still got these little collector dudes and those not only uh, connect the different parts of our network together, but also uh, get us power. So they're very useful and essential for our uh, for our stuff but what we also have is these relays and the cool thing about so relays don't give you power but the cool thing about them is that they extend a lot farther than uh, like they you can make a longer connection than uh, from the regular collector so for instance I can leapfrog here I can say go from that relay over to here and then go over to here and go over to here and be these are uh you can see these are uh down at the bottom pointing at the screen is dumb but down at the bottom here you can see that these are higher higher ground than the down here so if th as this area this lower area floods these little mountain things will all stay above and so i can have my uh my uh relays just connecting all the little mountains together. Boop, and they're safe. And so this level is uh, encouraging. Uh, uh, this level is encouraging you to use the uh, relays, of course. So and you can see the, uh, the packets actually move faster across relays too. So why don't we actually because of that, we're actually gonna, I'm gonna actually make a relay connection back to my command center, even though I don't have to, but that'll just make my packets move faster through there. So watch this, so now I can go boink, boink, boink. Boom, nullifier, look at that. I didn't even build anything, any destruction and stuff. That was, uh, so this is obviously another easy level. So hopefully we will get to more challenging stuff in a bit. Um, they get extremely, extremely difficult. Uh, and especially like the, there's like the randomly generated levels, um, what are called tormented space, uh, which uh, there's some that I, I have not been able to beat. Yeah, they actually do have a little bit of things from replicators from Stargate, kind of thing of it. The way they sort of adapt to different situations and stuff. 
All right, so uh, let me just zoom in a little bit here. All right, so I've got my uh, got my nullifier going on here, and it's just charging up. I'm charging my laser. Again, it won't matter because it won't be done in time. But anyway, watch this. Do, do, do. Bam! Pow! See, I took out both of them. Hang on, I had that, I've got that PowerPoint there. Quickly, what, see, okay, see, look at this. So you can see how far a relay will normally join. So sort of about, well, it's twice the distance of a collector. Unless I use a PowerPoint and then look at how far it can join. That can be very useful. All right, I will claim victory. All right, screw you, sector. We're leaving. And we're gonna go to this sector. Warp. Warp travel is strange to me. What? What is this strange new travel? Yeah, we, we kind of broke Rift Space. That was fun. That was also in a previous game, I think. Maybe not, I don't know. Uh, so basically, yeah, Creeper, like love, always finds a way, which is pretty, pretty shitty. All right. So you can see how this is going to go. We want to get to there, but that, the, those two planets are shielded. This planet isn't shielded. There we have the key to there, and there we have the key to there. It's pretty, uh... Not incredibly complex level design, or, or not, uh, you know, uh, level progression. The level design can be quite cool, actually. All right. The world's been silent for over 100,000 Earth years. <sighs> yeah, this is like a broken, broken down city, which is pretty crappy. That would suck if this was like hell. It was just fighting Creeper over and over again. Anyway, playing Creeper World over and over again. All right. There's reactor tech, which is this thing here. Which, uh, so like I was saying, there are several ways to generate power. The, the collectors, these things being one of those ways. Uh, but if you notice how collectors work, uh, if you notice how collectors work, they have that green, the green sort of uh, circle around them. That's the, uh, their collecting area. So they're, they're sort of solar collectors or something, I think. Anyway. Um, so putting more like putting more collectors in here won't actually get me any more power because it's not hitting any more area so now when you hit the max amount of uh, power you can generate in the little area that you're in um, what you can also do is build these reactors which uh, are take a lot more time to build and they're much less efficient than the uh, collectors but you can build them in tight uh, in a tight array you can see my energy consumption and usage up here. So right now I'm using uh, 3.8, and I'm uh, I have 4.6, or I'm I'm producing 4.6. I'm using 3.8, so I'm doing pretty good. So I can make a few here. And these guys are uh, yeah. You can see when I mouse over them, I can see how fat like amount five interval 0.5, amount 3.5 interval 3.5. So that's how much creeper they're producing and how often they produce creeper. Oh yeah, maybe you can't see the energy bar. Whoops. Oh, that sucks. Wonder if I can move that. No. 
If you look at the energy bar up that you can't see, it's locked to the top of the screen, unfortunately. All right, maybe I'll have to mess around with that for future use. Anyway, so I'm just gonna make a bunch of, uh, I'm gonna make a bunch of reactors here so I have a nice good power base. And then I'm gonna kick some ass. You can see, uh, no, damn it, you can't see. Well, maybe you can see a little bit. You can see the little green uh, line up there. Uh, now it's going into red and you see my network is all turning red. That means I was building a little too fast there and my consumption was in going past my uh, use, my production, which is bad and slows everything down. Right, I guess I could just disable the overlay. One sec. Duh. I'm too caught up in my ways. There we go. Boom, look at that. It's a brave new world. Also, I'm like cut off halfway down, but I won't. All right, uh, so I'm just gonna build a couple more of these and then we're gonna do some cannoneering. So if I notice here, if I if I put a cannon out here, nothing happens because it's not connected to my network, right? So guys, now you can see my energy up here at the top. Woo, energy. Uh, but now, so, so it's not connected to my thing so I can I can just go and destroy that one because it's not being built and didn't do anything. But I can, if I connect it to my network, then you can see those little gray build packets come out and start uh, building my stuff. And, oh, I can build lots of these guys. Wait, maybe I can move myself down. One sec. All right, here we go. I moved down a little bit, just so I don't want to freak anybody out. All right, so I'm gonna double click on these guys to select them all. And wait, no, before I do that, I'm going to build some collector. So I, I need to actually make it so that I'm gonna move my network out into the danger zone here, but I gotta move it such that I can actually, I gotta move it there so that I can actually power my dudes. You can see I can select these guys all at once and move them all in one big group here, which I'm gonna do. See, so I'm just building out, keeping my network uh, building out. Now I could be using relays here instead of uh, oops. instead of uh, collectors. Oops. Pay attention there and lost a collector. But I could be using relays here instead of collectors um, if I wanted to move a little faster. But the nice thing about using collectors is that I'm actually getting incidental uh, extra energy as I'm doing this. So you can do this kind of, uh, you know, maneuver where you're sort of moving forward while, uh, you know, while the, while the other, while turrets are defending the stuff. Because if you move everybody forward all at once, then they'll be, while they're in the air, when they can't fire, there'll be a time when uh, the collectors are unprotected. And so uh, then... Uh, and so then you'll have this thing where you like you move your guys forward, but then suddenly the the creeper 
flows in and destroys all your collectors, which obviously you don't want to do because then when you guys drop, when you guys land, they won't have any power. All right, we're gonna nullify this guy. Yeah, so he's the the game has been is like is made and it's done, um, and he and it's on Gamers Gate and a few other places. But to get it on Steam, he's going to do uh, uh, the the Steam Greenlight. So if uh, if you are on Steam yourself, um, I would uh, and you like look at this game, uh, I would uh, highly recommend uh, you know whatever liking his Greenlight page or whatever you're supposed to do for Greenlight. So this is charging up. Boom. All right, so it's talking about power zones now. Now it's, now it's actually telling me about power zones, even though we already know about them. But yeah, I'm just gonna put my uh, gun on the power zone here to charge it up. I love the way it just like spins in circles. <laughs> shooting everything. Uh, each weapon has a sort of a, not an AI, but like a, a set of rules that it follows um, in terms of where it fires. So like the guns will always fire at the heaviest, uh, no, or at the, I think they always fire at the closest piece of creeper that they can hit. Um, and then there's other guys that fire always at the heaviest thing. All right. Damn it! I did it again. I'm really bad at that. Oh no! So, this, so look, this guy's run out of power because things not built. Ah! Go! 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 Charge! Charge! Ah! He made it. All right. Yes. Uh, for those of you who are wondering why it's just me. Uh, Graham and Kathleen and the rest of the crew uh, are going to be back, uh, are just on their way back right now. And uh, at 4 o'clock, um, we're going to be doing your standard, uh, your regularly scheduled uh, checkpoint. Uh, so that should be good. So the, the connections that uh, these collectors make can go through... Uh, uh, can go through walls and stuff, so I can build the, the collector here and connect it up to a dude on the other side. All right, so this guy has run out of stuff to shoot at, which is the saddest state of affairs for a uh, for a turret to be in. So I'm just going to move him somewhere more useful. All right, so you see this guy can't quite handle all the creeper that's coming at him, and he's actually getting hurt right now. Damn it, I did it again. Man, I gotta pay more attention. Okay, so I, I actually moved those guys back a little bit because I realized that I was in a bad state there. Check this out. If you want to put a, uh, a collector on the PowerPoint, then you can collect all that stuff. I'm actually gonna put a relay on there though. You can also put a reactor on there to get a bunch, more, bunch of power through the reactor. But I'm gonna put a relay on there because then I'll connect to all my guys for a while. See, now I can just build a relay like that, and it works great. Okay. So, here we go. Forward motion assaulting behavior. A two-pronged assault. I wouldn't really call it a pincer movement, but it's a sort of a lopsided pincer. The deadliest of pincers. I'm going to actually build out my uh, relay network here because I feel like my packets are coming a little slow. Ooh, look at all that. It's like a big spider web. Mm-hmm. 
Alright, here we go. Let's nullify this guy. So notice that I had a little bit more trouble taking out this guy than this guy over here, because this guy has is a, a stronger emitter. He's got a he's a five emitter instead of a two point or two point five. Alright, so I got my uh, nullifier going on here. And I'm blowing shit up, hopefully. And then... Man versus Jam. Yeah, there's a lot of pew pewing in this game. That's, that's definitely fair. Uh, so the strategic reason to only build a few turrets is that, um, you know, the charging your turrets takes power. However, I actually have a lot of power right now. So you know what? You're right. I'm going to be silly. So you can see my power consumption is totally wacky right now. That is not even that bad. Apparently I totally overbuilt my power. Anyway. That guy can pretty much just destroy this entire area by himself because he's on PowerPoint. And now, now, we shall unleash the dogs of war. Which fit into a nice grid, which is nice. Except they need power. Uh, is let me ask what a super nullifier does. I'm glad you asked. Watch this. Well, you can see, I won't actually be able to activate it, but you can see a super nullifier. So this is, you can see the red is the regular range of a nullifier. Boom, super nullifier is even bigger. I can't actually, you can't actually place nullifier if it's not in a position to nullify something. So I can't actually place it. But, uh, in fact, I'm actually gonna put a collector here because there's a lot of stuff to collect. Got shield key. So, you see, my guys can't fire through all this rubble and stuff, which is kind of annoying. But I can do this. Which is kind of interesting. So now, see, I'm building out my, um, my network far forward of where I'm actually am. Normally you wouldn't be able to do that, but because this is uh, a, um, because these are higher ground, they're not covered in creeper right now. So now that we have that, we now we have that connection, let's try doing a massive assault here. Actually, it's, I won't do that part. Let's keep a few guys back so that because the problem you're going to do is you do like the massive assault and like I was saying that they can get like a rebound of creeper coming back at you because oh yeah look at that look at that just a massacre I we I hey 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 that's not what we want to see Oh, it's because they're not actually connected to me. The guy in the... See, everybody's happy. Connected, connected, connected. That guy in the middle, he's still spinning. But he's not actually firing because he has no power. <laughs> Let's remedy that, shall we? Now, we should have somewhere that we can put a nullifier. There we go. Get a nullifier in there. OK, 
okay, it's not connected, but eh, I don't care at this point. So, I mean, obviously I've massively overbuilt this at this point. You know, those guys, you know, when, when they have the, uh, the things up that are... Oh no, Dix, are you not feeling good? That sucks. Uh, so, I mean, as I was talking about before, if I wanted to speed this up, if I could connect that guy back to my network, then instead of having to go all the way around, the packets could go straight across, so they'd be going much faster. <laughs> Derp. All right, um, I'm actually just going to uh, quickly run an ad and go to the bathroom. And I will be back. Hello. All right, let us get back to it. Do, 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 do. All right, so we got the key for Far York here. So it has a little green circle there when you finished, so, or when you have successfully done it. Yeah, so this is actually a redo of a map of uh, from an, uh, the previous Cripple World game, I believe. So they just blew up. So this planet got like super destroyed with giant mass drivers that made huge uh, craters in the planet. And you get mortars. All right, so as I was talking about with the levels of ground, uh, these guys in the in the pits will fill up that spot, will fill up the, uh, they have to fill up these entire craters before they can actually come out and attack me, which is great. So I'm gonna pick out and make it even more fun. I have, uh, so I've collected mortars. And the cool thing about mortars is they, uh, they're like explode. So rather than just going pew pew, they go, they destroy big chunks of creeper and they destroy, and they're specifically designed to destroy like pools of creeper. So, like, for instance, uh, 
if I, so as I am working here, I can create a mortar right there. And I can build another mortar over here. And I'll build another one over here. Or I will build more here. And we shall see. Diamond Tiki, uh, I guess I'm sorry you don't get any ads, uh, but uh, we, we get that sometimes in Canada too. Um, you, know, you can always subscribe if you're not already. If you're already subscribed, well then, you know, you've done a good, you've done good stuff. Uh, tell your friends, tell your enemies, you know, spread the word. That's how you can support us. So you see, these guys are actually just, these are uh, shooting, are bombarding the stuff. And they will, rather than just going to and attacking a little bit of creeper, they destroy all the creeper underneath. So if there's like a big deep pool of creeper, then it'll just be like, destroys the entire thing. So they can be very effective, but in certain circumstances. So you gotta choose who to use where, right? That would be the strategy aspect. I know, surprise, surprise. Okay, so you see this is overflowing now. In fact, that guy probably won't survive. In fact, that guy probably won't survive. Oh dear, I neglected this. I need to build a guy back there. All right, this guy looks like it's mostly taken care of, although I should probably look over on the other side. So, yeah, I mean, I guess this is this is sort of a bit of a retro game, but the graphics are actually quite nice. I don't know if it really comes comes across, but you know, everything's like all animated and stuff. And, uh, the original game, like I was saying, is was a flash game, um, but this one is like in Unity and stuff, and you, can, you know, I'm playing it full screen. And there's it's out for PC and Mac, um, and um, I believe he is currently working on a Linux version as well. Make it as you know, spread far and wide as possible. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, and as somebody within the chat was saying, um, it's. Uh, it is not, you can currently just buy it. I think it's about 15 bucks. And you can buy a, uh, yeah, the, you, so one thing, you can play a demo of all three of them, all three of the games, one, two, and three, all of demos. So, you know, you can get an idea of whether you actually like this, you know, you actually like what they're putting down here or what he's putting down here. Um, but if you do, then you can, uh, you can buy it and there's like a pack of all three games you can get for like 25 bucks or something or you can get an individual one. All right, so I've got these, uh, these mortars that are pretty much suppressing the creeper. This, this one's a little bit out of control, but hopefully once this guy happens there. You can see uh, down here that when I move my mouse, as I move, you can see that the creeper is really deep right there. Look at how deep that is. So I'm actually gonna move this guy into there. And I'm gonna build some cannons. So the, the mortars are really good at suppressing the creeper, but they don't, uh, you know, they, they it's hard to make sort of forward progress with the mortars because they, uh, you know, they'll leave sort of a thin, a thin film of creeper on stuff, but they'll greatly reduce the power. Oh, I'm overbuilding. Look at me overbuilding. Now here we go. Let's relax a little bit now. Hmm, that's a good point. I mean, especially over to, uh, Here, I'm gonna build some relays just to speed things up a little bit. 
later on in the game you get actual like upgrades where you get like upgrades to your to packet speed and upgrades to your uh, uh, various abilities. Again, just like the uh, just like the blasters, you want to keep your uh, mortars connected to your network. I love the sound of the uh, nullifiers charging up. It's like. <laughs> Now, mortars on a power thing are very, very powerful, but no, he won't be able to hit me. Check out how, wide, how big his, 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 uh, his attack radius is on the power pad, and he isn't blocked by hills and stuff, but he has nothing to hit, so there's no point in building there. I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a... Uh, well, first thing, move these guys down so I'll actually just destroy all that stuff. So we're pretty much, we're, okay, so I'm going to build a reactor in there. So normally reactors give you, I think, 0.5 energy, um, whereas if you build them on a power point, they give you four or something, so it's a lot better. So I'm going to reuse these guys, move them over here. So what we're going to do um, when we do uh, uh, you know we're like I said we're doing checkpoint um, this afternoon um, and that takes a little bit to set up right we've got to set up the, you know do the graphics and finalize the stories and stuff so um, probably what will happen is um, at some point uh, probably yeah, I'll let you do it. maybe I'll do another level or two. Got my shield key. We can move some of these guys over here too. Um, at some point, fairly soon, uh, I'll go offline and we'll go offline for, um, you know, uh, half an hour, 45 minutes while we get that, uh, uh, while we get checkpoint all ready to go. And then checkpoint will go, we'll start checkpoint at uh, uh, 4 o'clock. Let me talk about it. Hi. Internet Explorer is PC cancer. I say that as a web developer. It's not, I mean, the newer versions aren't so bad, but like Internet Explorer literally set the internet back. Like Internet Explorer 6 prevented internet technologies from being developed for literally like four years. Like we would be four years more farther ahead in terms of like cool internet technologies like Ajax and uh, mobile stuff and things. Um, and I mean, yeah, uh, the new versions of Internet Explorer aren't so bad. Um, you know, they mostly caught up with things. But it's just... Uh, It's just bad. All right. There's done for this level, it looks like, because we got that charging up. We have this guy, we can actually, we're actually suppressing him enough, and the last level is close enough to the edge that we can just put the uh, nullifier up on the edge here and it still gets him. What 
do I recommend for a PC? I mean, for a web browser for a PC? Uh, I mean, Chrome is good. Firefox is also good, but personally, I find it tends to be a little slow. That might be, I haven't tried it in the most, the more recent versions. That may not be the case, but. Chrome is always good. Uh, all right, let's check out what's going on in this level. <laughs> okay, fine, Zero. That's it's maybe we would, maybe wouldn't be like four years more advanced because technology is all developed. But it did make us basically. It did make the internet technology world uh, essentially stagnate for like so long it was terrible and there were people were, and keep people kept developing these great technologies and it was like that's really great no one can use it because everything has to run on internet explorer 6 and internet explorer 6 doesn't work <laughs> all right so check out this planet this planet actually has holes in it that can't be good Yeah, so a terrible weapon was used to rip the world apart. Double artifacts. Or miner and sprayer. All right, so here we go. This is, we're gonna find, I'm gonna get, gonna get our second resource here. So we have uh, energy. So this is actually referencing the plot to uh, Creeper World 2, where you first encounter Anti-Creeper, which is Creeper that you create. So you get to have, it's like, aha, I have jam of my own. All right, so I'm gonna put this guy down. I'm gonna build my collectors out. So, I mean, most levels basically start the same, as you can see. You're gonna build out your network, gonna get some power going, and then, so I got a sprayer, which is the thing that shoots anti-creeper, and I have uh, a miner, which is the thing that, gives me creeper, which is a thing that, so if I put a miner on these mines here, doop, 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 then I can uh, start mining stuff, and uh, which is good, because the in previous versions or uh, pre in the RV RV Lishrak, you know, uh, I one thing I've learned with uh, web development is never say never. There are certain situations uh, where browser detection is necessary. For instance, uh, in the on the the loading ready run um, mobile site, because uh, in mobile, in the world of mobile, we're basically not quite at the browser wars territory like it was back in the battle days. But it, there's still some serious problems. And so, in the Logger Run mobile site, um, it works really, really great with our with the cool um, like uh, the bar that fits at the bottom of the page and all this stuff. Um, except in very old or in older versions of Android, um, and unfortunately, because of how Android's upgrade system works, um, older versions of Android still. Uh, uh, are still around quite, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're quite prominent and in fact are sometimes still sold, which is horrible. But anyway, um, so, uh, so I, uh, in order to make the site work so that, um, so that people on internet, on older versions of, um, Chrome or sorry, not Chrome, the it's, this is before Android was actually running like Chrome. So this is like the Android browser. So in early versions of Android browser, I had to, I have to actually implement, there's actually some browser detection stuff that looks for uh, the 
it, it says, you know, if the version of Android that's running on the people's computer is above or uh, uh, below a certain thing, then uh, don't do the fancy menu bar. And unfortunately, that just that's that seemed to be. I, I did a bunch of you know tests and research and stuff. And if you look in the thread, um, the like the the thread where I sort of announced the mobile site and was getting bug reports from people and stuff, um, uh, that's where I you, you can see me trying different techniques <laughs> and uh, some of them not being to be useful. So what I'm doing, I'm building some um, some uh, creeper, anti-creeper sprayers here. These three guys. So um, we got a nice bottlenecks here. So we're not actually in too much danger. So anyway, I can tech chat and I can play the game at the same time. That's multi-talented. Look at that. My creeper is blueberry, though, not um, grape. I don't know. My creeper's better than your creeper. My creeper's better than yours. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this is a planet with holes in it, um, which, as you may guess, is not good. And uh, that is obviously less than ideal for the inhabitants of this planet. Which, surprise, surprise, there are none because they're all dead because their planet has a hole in it. L to not have holes in your planet, guys. Seriously. So anti creeper. Oops. It's, the, so anti creeper. Uh, what's neat is that anti creeper uh, operates on the exact same sort of physics model as creeper creeper, uh, the actual deadly creeper, um, except it is safe for you. So you know I can have my guys sitting on it and it's cool. And in fact it. Uh, and so it pushes back the uh, the good the evil creeper. You can push it back with the good creeper. Um, and the same stuff applies. Like you can, if there's like a you can have like a big pit. <laughs> Zero. Oh. <laughs> So you see, so like for instance, you can see here, the the good creeper is doing a nice job of clearing out this area, but it can't get over this hill because it's creeper. In fact, the guns can't get over this hill either. Oh, there it goes. See, it filled up this area. It got, if it either gets enough uh, weight or mass of creeper here, it'll slowly get over the hill, but it requires a fair amount. But you know what we can do. Look at how many uh, guys there are in this thing. I mean, if I wanted to be greedy, I could like go around and get all of these things and get like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, uh, 11 power spots. Um, that's probably not necessary. <laughs> oh, come on. Big butt. I thought I had that under control. You move forward. We gotta move up our timeline, or move up our thing. Okay. Right. I don't want those guys. 
I'm gonna take these two guys and move them up here. Just to put some pressure on the creeper there. Yeah, so you know, we haven't playing I've been playing easy levels here, but you can see how you know if you if you lose control of the situation, like there can be this like whole cascade failure thing. Like for instance, if this uh, if this node got destroyed right there, everything in here would suddenly turn off. All these guys would stop, and the creeper would just come flying over the, or come flooding over the uh, thing, and that would be very bad. So we're not going to do that. But now I have a power plate, power point, power place. Pixel power, I don't know what it's called. Power point. And therefore... The ordering shall commence. What's nice is that... Um, that creeper was up high, too. Like, where's this guy? If I put a cannon on that power point, he'll just be able to attack here. He won't actually get anywhere. But what I can put on that power point is a uh, mortar and you can see what happens with the mortars uh so again uh if people want this game uh the easiest way to get it right now is if you just go to uh the website of the developer uh knucklecracker.com oh yeah i wonder if it would oh man it totally would i'm being dumb you guys are totally right watch this boom i can hit both of those yeah. That'll serve you creepers right for hanging out so close together. I for some reason the like the nullifier on the PowerPoint thing is really cool, but and, and it's super useful. But usually the the um, emitters are placed farther apart and so I don't usually I often don't think of it. But it is exactly what we want in this circumstance. Man, look at that! So close. Uh, oh yeah, the the uh, yeah. Once I once this thing charges up and I destroy these two, I'll put the uh, uh, anti creeper shooter on the power point. And you'll see what happens there. But what I will do, is put this mortar on here. You can see that because that's pretty cool. Double nullification. Check that out. All right, check this out. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah. Shit is going bananas. In fact, I'm going to put another mortar right there. So the power, like, controlling or figuring out how the, how best to utilize your power points um, is definitely, so check this out, like, so good. Yeah, this is multi ball. <laughs> so this guy is just pouring anti-creep, but this is like a very, like, remember I was fighting the like, uh, five emitter? This is a 20 emitter right now. So that guy is very powerful, but he's stuck on this little thing, so. But once this guy gets done, he can start helping out. Alright. Well. While we're here, we might as well while we're waiting for other stuff to build. We might as well go and attack this guy. You shouldn't be too tough. Really good. So mortars automatically attack. So the trick with all this stuff is it can be a little tricky, or this stuff can be a little tricky because you, can't, you don't actually control where like guns and mortars shoot. They always just shoot you know, in the case of the guns, they shoot the closest thing. In the case of the mortars, they shoot at the largest uh, group of creeper. All right, so again, I can go nullifier, and then I can null I can nullifier there to him, and then him to him, probably, if I wanted to. Or I could just nullifier right there right now. Which I should probably do. I think uh, we're gonna. This will be my last uh, level. We will. I'll go offline, and we will get prepared 
for checkpoint. So anyway, um, to reiterate, it is uh, this game uh, is called Creeper World, and this is this particular one is called Creeper World Three: Arc Eternal. Um, and if you are, uh, if you think it looks cool, you can uh, get it from the uh, Knuckle Cracker website, which is knucklecracker.com. And there's a demo there you can try out if you want to. Uh, yeah, I could put a sprayer up here too. I mean, I'm obviously not doing these in the most efficient way because these are easy levels. Um, so I'm just going to have fun. Um, so yeah, check it out. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I don't have any uh, scheduled streaming times, but you know, I might come in and do some, stream some more streaming of this game or some other game that I find interesting uh, at some point. And uh, yeah, I can show you some of the more, maybe I can show you some of the more advanced levels where you get uh, flying guys and uh, the tarp, which is basically the best thing ever. Tarp is the terrain something. I don't know. It's the, it, it allows you to raise and lower terrain so you can make like bridges and stuff. It's very cool. Boom. Oh, look at all those PowerPoints. I want them so badly. All right. I will claim victory. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna exit this. So anyway, uh, let me switch to, anyway, thanks for joining me on, I don't know what this show is, but it's Graham and Paul without Graham, possibly PLP. I don't know. There's probably a better name for it than that. But anyway, uh, and I will, will be going offline and we'll be coming back uh, at four o'clock for uh, Checkpoint Plus. So do that, we'll be doing Checkpoint Plus. We'll do the show. We'll, as normal, we'll sit around for a little while and talk about stuff, uh, other news and so forth. And, uh, and then Graham and I will uh, round out the hour or round out the, uh, we'll actually do a real GPLP um, with both of us, uh, but we'll only, we'll just do another hour of that till, uh, till six and then it will be beach time, which I know is everybody's favorite time. All right. Bye-bye. I'll run an ad at the end because that's a thing. <laughs>